as always, we, we ground everything we do in our best for all strategy. And again, today we're talking about the educators. And um, what we're going to talk about today is just some of the things that we're um, that you can be doing this summer. Um, achievement measure scores for the 2022-23 school year and thinking about things that need to be done before the beginning of the 23-24 school year. So as far as achievement measure scores, districts and charters must enter achievement measure scores for all of these types of measures. So if your teachers chose state assessment, off-the-shelf assessments, graduation rate, ACT, early post-secondary, or industry certifications, those all need to be entered by the district. Some of those scores you will, you'll begin to get, and you can start uploading those as soon as you get those scores. Uh, the most efficient way to submit these achievement measure scores is in bulk and to use the import wizard in T-Encompass. Uh, the instructions for using the import wizard are posted on the team website, and there's a link to that there. Um, it walks you right through step by step what you need to do to import those. You can use the import wizard multiple times. So if you import some in the next few weeks and then you get another batch of data in and you want to import those, you just download um, the spreadsheet again, leave what's there and add your new information. One of the things that um, you need to start thinking about, and this is most districts don't have this, but you need to make sure that the school directory is updated. The school directory is where that's this is how we configure T Encompass with everybody's school and district and where you are. So um, please make sure that if you have any new school openings, new schools close schools closing, or schools that are changing names and or grade bands, that you get that information updated. Um, in the school directory. That may not be your job. It's maybe someone else's job in your district. Um, this is from the uh, department website. If in the search bar you just type school directory, you will find this if you need this information. Um, there is a school directory submission guidance, which will walk you through everything you need to know about submitting information. The program and school authorization formula form that has to be filled out for any new school and, and some other times minor changes um, are easier to submit. You can also go to the school directory from here and check your schools to make sure they're listed correctly. There is a timeline for submission for these things. Um, the submission window actually opened in September. This would be for a new school, um, but they all have to, any changes have to be submitted by June the 1st at 5 p.m. And then by July the 3rd, it will all be active in the new school directories. Configuring um, T Encompass for 2023, the 2023 school year is something that most of you all will probably do. Um, in order to do that, for us to configure T Encompass, you have to complete a flexibility survey. Um, the flexibility survey will go out sometime um, end of July, end of June, 1st of July, we'll have that ready. This year, instead of a form stack, this is going to be completed in T Encompass. Um, districts will have the ability to edit contacts as they need um, during the school year. And um, we will send the release date to evaluation configurators, and it will also be communicated in the commissioner's update for directors. So be watching that. We will reach out to you when, uh, when this is ready. You will be able to also at any time go into T Encompass and see what your settings are. Um, you won't be able to change them. Obviously, some of those settings cannot be changed during the middle of the year, but you will be able to, if, when you have questions, you'll be able to look and see what you chose. On the flexibility survey, one of the first things that you will choose is your observation model. You will select an approved observation model. For models other than team, you have to, um, you'll have to, to describe how you are going to certify your evaluators. If you choose team, you do that through the um, through us and you sign up for those um, courses. Um, if team, team is chosen as the observation model, only team, the district and charter has flexibility in pacing. So your pacing, if you are a team district, your pacing can be pay, based off of um, the licensure type in the previous year's LOE, 
or it can be the previous year's individual growth score. So districts and charters using the team rubric have the option to set pacing using these two options. One thing to remember, if you choose to use the individual growth scores, which would be TVAS portfolio or an alternative growth measure, if you choose to use the previous year's individual growth score, it is going to guide the number of observations, even if their LOE was higher. So you could have a situation where a teacher's individual growth was a four, and their LOA may have been a five, but if you have chosen the individual growth scores, their, L their pacing will be based on the four. Um, voluntary pre-K, um, if your district receives voluntary pre-K monies, your district or charter must implement a portfolio or an alternative growth measure in grades pre-K and kindergarten. You'll select all that in the next section. You may choose to add additional growth measures for non-tested teachers in other grades and areas. However, if you get voluntary pre-K money, it is required for pre-K and kindergarten. So this is where you would select your options for the non-tested teacher. Every district and charter is required to utilize at least one alternative growth measure for non-tested teachers. Now, alternative growth measures, we have two. We have portfolios and we have the alternative growth measure um, universal reading screener. If you receive um, voluntary pre-K money, implementing the pre-K and kindergarten portfolios meets the requirements. You don't have to do an additional one, but every district and charter has to do at least one. These are the options for non-tested teachers. For pre-K, you have two options, portfolio and the state board approved universal reading screener. Kindergarten, first and second grade have the same options. We also have portfolio options for physical education, fine arts and world languages. Remember when you opt into any of these, it is for all of the teachers in that area or grade that are in your district. You, you can't pick and choose by school. It's for the whole district. And teachers don't have an option of doing that or not. And the flexibility, uh, school climate surveys, there are very few districts that use those, but according to state board policy, district and charters may opt to use student surveys for up to 5% of a teacher's LOE. There are only um, currently four surveys that are approved by the state board. There are the Tennessee School Climate Survey, Tripod Survey, My Student Survey, and Panorama. You have some administrator evaluation flexibility also. Um, charters will choose which observation model they will use for their administrator evaluation. For districts and charters, if they choose, will opt into the annual flexibility. You, you were going to, there is a flexibility you can opt into. So you can either enter one summative score based on each indicator on multiple observations throughout the year, or you will enter two scores for each indicator where one is in the, the fall con, con, constitutes one third of the average and the spring score constitutes two thirds of the average score. So that is a district and charter option. Uh, the four or five Trump rule, we get a lot of questions on this throughout the year. Um, the state board um, approved this and it allows local education, boards of education to adopt a policy for teachers whose individual student growth data demonstrates an effective le effectiveness level of a four or five to use the student growth score as 100% of the teacher's final evaluation score. So if you opt into the four or five Trump rule, a teacher that scores a four or five on their individual student growth, which would be TVAS, of uh, the alternative growth measure, universal reading screener, or a portfolio. If they make a four or five on it, that is their, their LOE. I'm um, opting into the Trump rule. I just said that. Um, it, it's the entirety of their LOE and it dictates the individual growth scores determine observation and pacing for the following year. So essentially, the growth score is going to be the pacing regardless of what the LOE score is. So it, again, you could have a situation where a teacher has a, a 
individual growth score of a four, but their LOE is actually a five, they would be, if you opted into the four or five Trump rule, everything would be based on that four. You also have to indicate which data system you're using. If you are using a system other than T and Compass to collect your teacher observation and or your administrator observation data, you need to, uh, you will have to supply um, the information for your vendor, whoever you're using, who is your vendor. Um, at any time, any district and charter can use T and Compass free of charge. Um, lastly, it requires a director of school signature before submitting. Um, for districts, this is your superintendent. For charters that are not part of the CMO, this would be the executive director of the charter school. For charters who are part of a CMO, it would be the director of the CMO, CMO lead. By signing and submitting this form, you're agreeing to the implementation, implementation of the options uh, for the entire school year. Once these are done, most of them cannot be changed. So the next steps for you would be to, if you have any growth and achievement measure selections that are missing, get them in. Um, I didn't update the slide. Um, share any of the information on pacing with your principals. Make sure that's all done. Get every um, all your observations done. Identify any educators who should be PYE and upload these scores as they become available. Talk with your district, um, district and district administrators about your flexibility survey options so that when that becomes available, you are ready to do it. Um, these are some resources that are on the website, the data import guide. We have the team website where our monthly office hours are all there. They are all there. They will remain there. So if you need to go back and watch any of the recordings, you can. And as always, you can email team questions. We are also seeking some feedback for this year. So we're um, going to do an evaluation configurator survey. This is a link to it. Um, you, can, you can access it when we post this, or we will be sending an email to all evaluation configurators um, to um, fill out the survey. We really want to hear from you in order to um, make our support more useful to you. Thanks for coming. We quick. do have a question in the chat, Amy. Okay, what's that? Are you, do you want to pause recording before we start questions? I do, thank you. Amy, would you like for me to put your survey?